I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my video on sets and Venn diagrams. Now this video is foundation for many topics in algebra, including discrete mathematics. It is also very important for students who are taking up permutation combination and probability. Many of the concepts which we'll discuss here will help you solve questions based on probability also. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send me an email on the address given here. In this video, we'll discuss about what the sets are, what is set notation, set of numbers we'll talk about. We'll also take up something about rational and irrational numbers. So that is kind of an extension to this particular uh, topic on sets. Then we'll take up subsets, complement of a subset, intersection of sets, union of sets, union rule. De Morgan's theorem is also an extension and there will be some extra practice test questions where we'll also take up cases where we'll talk about Venn diagrams with three events as shown here. Let's begin with some definitions. What is a set? Well, set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects in which it is possible to determine if a given object is included or not. Now, this is one of the most important definitions which needs complete understanding. Now, when we say well-defined, it means what? When we're trying to figure out any set, we have to define so that we can exactly say whether an element or a member will be a part of that set or not, right? So it is a well-defined collection of distinct objects, unique, separate from, right? Distinct objects. So for example, if we have a word like cool, C-O-O-L, then the set with letters on cool will only have three letters, C-O-L. O-O, which is being repeated, will not be represented as a member of the set. Distinct objects in which it is possible to determine if a given object is included or not. It is also a good time for you to think about something which is not a set. Okay, we'll leave it for the next slide but it is definitely a question to think about. Objects of a set are called the members or elements of the set. The symbol, this symbol is epsilon, which is belongs, means belongs here in this context, is written to show that an element belongs to the set. Order of elements in a set is not important. So if I have three elements, one, two, and three, for example, in a given set, then their order, three, two, one, is same as one, two, three, right? So order is not important. Sets are often named with a capital letter. All the elements of a set are listed in the curly brackets shown here. So within this curly brackets, we list all the members of the set. Two sets are equal if they have exactly the same elements. The number of elements in a set is called cardinality or cardinal number. A set can have infinite elements, like a set of natural numbers. Sets with no elements is called a null or empty set, which is written with the letter phi, a Greek symbol, or within the curly brackets, we can write phi, or curly brackets with nothing. That means a null or an empty set. Universal set includes all elements in the domain being discussed. So if you're working with natural numbers, then all the natural numbers will be domain of that particular set and we'll call that as a universal set. So these definitions will be absolutely clear when we take us some relevant examples. What you need to explore here is you need to provide example of a null or an empty set, right? Also, think about 
providing an example which is not a set, right? So take a moment and think what could be the example of empty set or what could be an example of something which is not a set, okay? Now here is example one where we'll learn about some definitions which we have discussed just now. Write true or false for each of the following statements. One, the sets 257 and 572 are equal. So I'd like you to read all this, write down your true and false answers, and then you can match with my answers, correct? So now think about it. You have to write true or false, correct? And the first one is a set 257 and 572 are equal. Well, they're definitely equal since order does not matter in set. That is what we're trying to say. N of A, it really means number of elements in the set A. N of A equals to 4 if A is a set of digits in the numbers 1, 0, 0, 1. So it says number of elements in this, which means we are defining A as set of digits in the number 1, 0, 0, 1. So the set of digits are only 1 and 0. Since they should be distinct, we cannot repeat zeros and 1s. So in fact, the number of elements in the set A is only 2. And therefore, this statement is false. Is that clear to you? Right? That's what we mean, that distinct items. Now, within those curly brackets, we have 0 is an empty is an example of a null set. Well, that is false. It has one element which is zero. It is not a null set. Okay. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six represents the set of numbers when two dice are rolled. Well, when one dice is rolled, then you get numbers one to six. But when two are rolled, then you get combination of one, two, and six. So this statement is also false. Five. Set of real numbers is an infinite set. That is so true, right? Set of natural numbers is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Is it true? I don't think so. Why? Set of natural numbers actually does not include 0. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Correct? Okay. Seven. Collection of old stamps is an example of a set. Well, is this a set? Can you tell what does it mean when I say set of old stamps? 10 years old, 50 years old, that has not been defined. So this is not a properly defined set and therefore it is false. And that is how it becomes important to define a set so that we could actually make out whether an element belongs to it or not. Eight, number of elements in a set where I've written five is zero. Well, this statement is true. It does not really have any element. It is an empty set, correct? So this statement is true. Now let's take a second example. Example two, set A is the letters in the world. Toronto, T-O-R-O-N-T-O. -O -O. Now, part A is list all the elements of the set A, B. Find the cardinality of the set A. So what is this word, cardinality? Number of elements in a set is cardinality, correct? C, is the set A equal to the set B, where B is set of letters in the word T-O-R-N? You can pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. So the first thing is, list the elements of the set A, and set A is defined how? Set A is letters in the word Toronto, right? So we are defining set A with letters in this word. So we'll say T, O, R, O is repeated. We are not going to write it again, and then M. And then T and O are already there. So there are only four elements in this particular set. Those which are repeated will not be written. Distinct objects, distinct elements. Clear? 
So, so that is how we are going to answer part A and B is cardinality. Clearly, there are four elements and therefore the cardinality of this set is 4, right? Now, C. Is the set A equal to set B? Set B is letters N, T, O, R, N. Well, the same are there. So, yes, that is also true, right? So, this one is also true. So, we'll say yes, true. Correct. Now, let's move on and take a next example. Now, we'll talk about the set of numbers. I've seen that students at this stage sometimes are confused about the set of numbers itself. Moving forward, we should be absolutely clear about all the types of set of numbers which we are going to deal with. So here in one column, I have given all the symbols and then describe them. Now n is set of natural numbers which start from 1. 0 is not included in set of natural numbers. Whole numbers include 0 also. So 0 with the natural numbers makes whole numbers. When we include positive and negative numbers and the 0, it is set of integers. Now, in this set of integers, there are, you know, different ways of writing. So sometimes we write as integers with a positive sign there, which I have written here. So integers, positive integers, will include all the numbers which are natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0 is not included in this. But when I'm saying negative integers, that means integers with negative, it means all the numbers which are less than 0. Again, 0 is not included. So, in the set of integers, if I write z with positive or negative kind of a exponent, in that case, 0 is not included in either of them. Now, Q stands for set of rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are written in the form of P over Q, where Q, the denominator, cannot be 0. Makes sense. Also, we write them in many different forms, but when you write them in the simplest form, then the common factor between them is only 1, the greatest common factor. Now, Q bar is not rational or irrational numbers. So, rational is Q. Irrational means not rational is Q bar. So, that is the symbol for irrational numbers. Numbers like square root 2 pi e, these are all irrational numbers, right? So, you cannot write in rational numbers in the form of P over Q. That is kind of important to understand. We'll take up example to elaborate this. R is set of all the real numbers and all the numbers which we have discussed so far include real numbers. Now, you also come across the quadratic formula where within the square root you have b square minus 4ac. Sometimes within the square root you get a negative sign, right? So those with negative sign within square root are not real numbers. So we extend that to complex numbers. So complex numbers include all the real numbers and also square root of minus 1. So a square root of minus 1 is normally written with i, iota, and that is a part of imaginary number. So the complex numbers include real as well as imaginary numbers, correct? As pointed out earlier, non-negative integers include 0. Do you see that? So if I have to include 0 with the positive numbers, I could say non-negative integers, right? I could not use any of those symbols for integers, but I could say non-negative integers. They include 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now, in this example, we'll talk about rational numbers. We need to show that 1.232323, which is like 1.23 recurring, right? You could also write this as 1.23 where 2, 3 is repeating, 2, 3 recurring, this is a rational number. Now, in this particular example, we'll show that this can be written in the form of P over Q, where Q is not equal to 0. So, the steps are kind of like this. Let X be equal to 1.232323. Then, 
multiply by 100. We get 100x as 123.232323. But if I take away x from 100x, then all the numbers which are recurring, repeating numbers in the decimal cancel away. You get 122 equals to 99x and x will be equal to 122 over 99. So that is how you could express a number with repeating or recurring decimals as a rational number. And therefore, it is a rational number. Is this clear to you? Correct? Now, in example four, we'll also take up what is irrational number and how can we prove that it is irrational number? So the example before us here is show that square root of two is an irrational number. Okay, that is what we'll prove it now. We'll prove that this is not a rational number by contradiction. Means, I will assume that this is a rational number. Now, once I assume that this is a rational number, that means it can be written in the form of P over Q. Now, in the lowest terms, the greatest common factor between P and Q should only be one, correct? So there's nothing else common between P and Q, right? So we know let X equals to P over Q, which is square root of two, because we say, let it be a rational number. So if it is a rational number, it could be written as P over Q. So P over Q equals to square root of two, you can now cross multiply square both sides. Once you square both sides, you get Q squared times two. So the right hand side now is an even number. That means P is an even number, multiple of two, right? So P becomes even number, a multiple of two, two is a factor of P. So I could write P as two times R, where R is not even, but two times R is P, which is even. Replacing p with 2r squaring, we get 4r square equals to 2q square. Now 2 and 4 cancel away with 2 there, and we get q square equals to 2r square. That means q square is even. Now q square can be even only if q is also even. So we have shown that q is even, and we have shown that p is even. That means they do have another greatest common factor which is more than one, at least we know they have two in common, correct? And therefore, from contradiction, we have shown that this is irrational number, correct? Now let's take up more concepts about the set. Now we'll talk about the set notation. There are two popular notations which we consider while representing the sets. One is called the rooster or the list form. In list form, within the curly brackets, you clearly list all the elements, right? We could also list infinite elements as shown here. So if you have limited number of elements, you could just write them within the curly bracket. If there are many elements, you could write the three dots in between to show that these are the numbers. Or at the end, to show that this is an infinite set of elements. Correct. The other form is called the set builder form. The sets defined by a predicate, that means a variable separated by a colon. So we have a variable which is separated by a colon or a vertical bar. That gives you a condition, right? Followed by the logical rule in the curly brackets. That becomes the set form. So what we have here is a curly bracket the curly bracket signifies a set. So this means a set, clearly. Beginning and end of a set, right? Now it is defined by a predicate. That means a condition is given to us. So what we normally do is that we'll give, we'll define a variable, right? So X, so we'll have some variable. So sets defined by a variable separated by colon or a vertical bar. So we'll say some vertical bar and then followed by logical rule. And this is a rule. So that is how we represent a set. And then it is called a set builder notation. Here are examples. P is equal to, this is the set where X belongs to set of integers so that 
x square is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 100. Q is y belongs to set of real numbers with a colon that gives you the condition thereafter y equals to 2x plus 1 where x is less than 6 and x belongs to natural numbers. So, so many conditions are given to us, right? So, the rules could be complicated as shown here. R, x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 0. Correct. So, now you can explore, find the number of elements in the above sets. So, now as an exercise, we have defined six sets here, correct? A, B, C, P, Q, R. As an exercise, find the number of elements in each set. Let's move on and take example five. Now, we talked about two particular notations. One was rooster form, which we also say list form, right? So, you simply list all the elements and we have set builder form. Now, here is an exercise for you. You can pause the video, answer, complete the table that is. So, we have given rooster form for two, set builder form for two others. You need to complete this particular exercise. Got it? Once you're done, we can look into how to do it, right? So, when you look into this pattern, 5, 7, 9, we say these are all odd numbers starting from 5 and ending at 9, 9, 9. So, you have to define that condition in set builder form and then get the answer. Here, we are given your set builder form. B is equals to X belonging to Z with a positive thing. You remember what it is? It is set of natural numbers, right? And the condition here is X is less than 10. So, clearly, want to think about it. So, similarly, answer the others. Now, let's look into the solution and discuss it. So, the very first one gives you 579 to 999. Now, we know we can define x belongs to natural numbers. These are all natural numbers. The condition is these are all odd numbers. I'm writing 2n minus 1 where x belongs to nat natural numbers and n, the variable defined here, is between 3 and 500. Correct? So, 2 times 500 is 1000. 1 less than 1000 is 999. So, that is how I get the rule. Clear? So, this is done. Now, when we talk about x less than 10, 10 is not included. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So, there are these 9 elements in the second set, B. C, we have 0, 7, 26, 63. You need to think, how do we get a rule? You will notice that the rule could be n cube minus 1. So, it is 1 less than a cube of a number. So, we can say x belongs to integers where x is equal to n cube minus 1 and n belongs to integers, right? So, that is what we have done. But in this case, the numbers are from 0. So, I should have written, uh, you know, uh, minus 1. So, it should be integers with plus, right? Or natural numbers I should have taken. So, x belongs to natural numbers could have been a better option. Clear? In this particular case. Or, I'm saying you could also say n belongs to z plus, right? Non-negative or positive integers. D. D equals to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So, clearly, in this particular case, we could say x belongs to integers with absolute value of x is less than 2, right? So, let's try to understand this. Absolute value less than or equals to 2 really means we're talking about the numbers which are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 as required in D, correct? Okay, so let's now look into another definition, very important from set point of view, which is called subsets. Set A is a subset of set B if 
every element of A is an element of B, right? So that is kind of important statement. So normally when we talk about sets, we put them in a rectangular box and that is what we talk about as Venn diagrams. Let me introduce Venn diagrams here itself. Now, when we are saying subset, then it could be kind of like this, that there is one set and then there's another set which is within it, right? So that becomes a subset. So if this set is A and the outside set is B, in that case, we say A is subset of B. Is that clear to you? So we are saying A is subset of B. So that is how we do it. Now, symbol for subset is we could write this as A is subset of B, right? That is the symbol. So in this case, we do have equality sign also. So there could be a condition where we could have both sets exactly same. You get my idea. Both exactly same. Or you can say A is subset of A. You get the idea. Set is also equal to. So equal sets can also be treated as a subset. You get the idea, right? So that means we could sometimes use another word when we exclude the sets which are equal and those are called proper subsets. So when it is a proper subset, that means that A is not equal to B, right? In that case, that is going to be the symbol where symbol will be, let me write again, right, this no equal to sign, right? That means A is a proper subset of B. It really means that there are some elements in B which are not in A, but all elements of A are in B, right? As shown here. So this is example of proper subset. Let me write here. So I hope that part is absolutely clear. Now, just as we have proper subset and we have a symbol here which is shown here it is written as a is a subset of b which is set a can be equal to set b also when we are talking about subsets right so therefore you have that equal to sign now b is called the super set of a right so so all the elements of a are also elements of b it is called the super set and the sign you will see has been inverted right so the direction changed okay so proper subset is the one where a and b are not equal but a is subset of b then if there is even a single element in a which is not in b then a is not a subset of b right that's very clear right all the elements of a should be elements of b so if it is not so then we could write A as not a subset of B with a cross in between as shown. Now, some of the good examples of subsets are our number system itself. Natural numbers are proper subsets of integers, which are proper subsets of rational numbers, which are proper subsets of real numbers. Correct? Also, we can say multiples of 4 are proper subsets of multiples of 2. Real numbers are superset of rational numbers, right? The other way. And when we say Z plus, right? So, so Z integers is a superset of natural numbers, but Z plus is, is a subset of N. So both are equal though, right? So we have used, it's not a proper subset. It is a subset of Z. So, Z is the integer and N is counting numbers. Phi is subset of every set. Very important to remember. Phi, the null set, the empty set is subset of all the sets. Okay. Now, here is example six. Set A has three elements. Find the number of subsets of A. So now we have to count how many subsets of A can be there. If there are three elements in A, you can pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestion. So let's take an example like this. 
let this set with three elements b p q r so three elements we just name them as p q r will you try to count the subsets start by saying there is no element at all we know empty sets are subsets of every set so let's begin from there so no elements at all is our case one there could be one element so p q and r individually or there could be two elements each p q p r q r three more right and one set which has all the three so that gives us combinations of this is one there are three like that three like this and one when you add them up you get eight so there are eight subsets if we have three elements in a set clear remember null set is a subset of all the sets and order of elements is not important correct so we got this answer we'll soon learn that we could also get this answer as 2 to the power of 3 which is equals to 8 since there are 3 is the number of elements let us see how do we get that answer so that is our strategy 2 for the same question so again we are trying to find the number of subsets set a as three elements the question is find the number of subsets of a now again let us consider the set pqr set with three elements pqr now think like this if i have three elements pqr then to find the number of subsets we could take p or we may not take p, p right so selecting p or not selecting p are two options so we have two options correct so we can say we can have number of options options is whether to consider an element or not so if i take p i say yes or if i don't take p i said no so there are combinations made with taking p not taking p so that means two possibilities same with q there are two possibilities we may take a q or we may not take a q and with r also there are two possibilities so total number of possibilities using accounting principles we get 2 times 2 times 2 which is 2q and 8 is our answer <clears throat> i hope this is absolutely clear now this could be generalized so the general result is that the number of subsets for a set with n elements is 2 to the power of n perfect Let's take example 7, which is including at least 2 in the question. So the question here is, set B has 4 elements. Now we have 4 elements. And the question is, find the number of subsets of B, each having at least 2 elements. Correct? So we have 4 elements. And we want to find number of subsets with at least 2. Means... We have to exclude zero elements, means no elements, or one element, correct? So, the subsets of two, each having at least two elements means we can find the total number of subsets, and from that, we take away subsets with no elements and subsets with one element, correct? Now, you know, two to the power of four will be total number of elements, since we have four elements 2 to the power of 4 is the total number of subsets correct which is 16 so from 16 i'll take away a null set which is only one unique then since there are four elements i could have four sets with one one element so four more so from 2 to the power of 4 which is 16 i could take 1 plus 4 and i get 11 as my answer so therefore for this particular case at least two right elements in each subset with four elements we get the answer as 11 correct so the number of subsets for a set with n elements is 2 to the power of n we just figured out but if there are some conditions then it gets modified as we did in this case next example we'll now talk about complement of a set let u be the universal set Right? So, if U is a universal set, then any set will be its subset. Correct? So, here we have. So, we have a universal set. So, let me write down outside. This is my universal set. Within this, we have a set A. 
we are saying A is a proper subset, there's something which is not within A, and that something which is not A is called the complement, correct? So, as defined here, then the complement of A is denoted by A prime or U minus A, right? And is defined as complement of A is equal to X belongs to U, but X does not belong to A, right? So, X belongs to U, but not belong to A. That means everything outside. So, if A is the circle given to us, then A prime is everything outside as mentioned here. Clear? That is what it means. It has huge significance in answering many types of questions. So, we'll take some examples to understand. So, let A be 2, 3, 5, and 7, and the universal set U be the numbers 1 to 9. Now, you need to answer each one of this. Find each of the following sets. First set is A prime, then U prime, not U, right? And then A prime prime, complement of A is complement. Complement of a null set. So, I'd like you to pause the video, answer these questions, correct? And then look into my suggestions. So, A is 2, 3, 5, 7. What should be not A? So, all the numbers which are not included from 1 to 9 in 2, 3, 5, 7 will come here, correct? What is complement of the universal set? Well, universal set includes everything. So, the complement of universal set will be a null set, correct? Got it? So, that is how we are going to answer this particular question. So, first, let's write down what is this set? A prime. So, 2, 3, 5, 7 should be missing. So, it is 1 and then 4, 5 and then we have 6, 7 missing, 8 and 9. Correct? So, out of those 9 elements, 4 were in A. So, we have 5 in A prime. You get the idea. Complement of universal is a null set, right? And complement of a complement is the set itself and then the complement of a null set is the universal set, correct? So, these are very important concepts to understand. Now, let us take what happens when we have two sets involved. So, in general, if we have two sets A and B, in that case, there may be some elements which are common to both. So, these elements which are common to both are called intersection. So, these are considered as common elements, correct? Right? So, these are the common elements, which is written by A intersection B. So, intersection of two elements, intersection of set A and set B is denoted by A intersection B like this, is the set of all the elements that are common to both sets A and B. So, A intersection B is X such that X belongs to A and X belongs to B, right? as shown in the Venn diagram, right here, very clear. Let's take up an example. We have set A, which is 2, 3, 5, 7. B is another set with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the universal set, we have taken 1 to 9 numbers. You can pause the video and write down the answers for these questions. What is A intersection B? So, what is common between A and B? That is what we are interested in finding. So, A and B, 2, 3, 5, 7, we said 2 is common, right? 3, 3 is also common, correct? 5, 5 is also common, but 7 is not common, right? The second one is A intersection B prime. Now, when we are talking about B prime, then think like this. All the elements which are not in this B. So, B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B prime will be what? Well, the number 7, 8, 9 is B prime. So now, consider A intersection B prime. So in these sets, only 7 is common, correct? Now we have to look into what is intersection of A prime and B. So 2, 3, 5, 7 were prime numbers and B. <coughs> the, excluding the prime numbers, we have the other numbers which are common. So if I exclude those prime numbers, and then we can write down rest of the numbers, correct? So, 
a prime intersection b means exclude the prime numbers and then we are left with one and then of course two three five are already there uh, so four is not there and six is not there so that comes now another way of representing is a intersection b prime that means we know what a intersection b is out of the universal set not two three five that is what we are saying so not two three five right so one four six seven eight and nine and that is how you could answer it the last one here is intersection of not a and not b right intersection not a and not b so that is what we are looking for right so what is not a let's write down what is not a right so let me write down what not a is so you have to exclude the prime numbers so we have one and then we have four six and we have eight and nine so that comes in not a so what is there with common between not a and not b is basically uh, we have eight and nine is common correct so we could take this as eight and nine So those are the common things in not A and not B. Does it make sense to you? So that is how we could answer it. Now, when we talk about two sets, it is not necessary that they will have some intersection or common elements. It could be like shown here, two sets, nothing in common. They're also called disjoint sets. And the name for this is mutually exclusive sets. That means not even a single element is common between these two sets correct so in our definition we'll say in the intersection of two sets is an empty set right in that case they are called disjoint or mutually exclusive sets and we can say a intersection b is a null set so that's another way of defining it perfect now again a similar example for mutually exclusive sets so we have set A, which is 2, 3, 5, 7. B is numbers 1 to 6, universal set as 1 to 9 numbers. Now the first question here is, if A intersection C is a null set, find the set C. Correct? We want A intersection C as a null set, and that means there should be nothing common with A intersection C. We know the universal set for us is numbers 1 to 9. So you need to now write down, what could be C? Well, here we could have more than one answer, right? Remember that, right? More than one answer. You could write many answers. Let's see. If I take C as uh, we could define C as uh, just a set, we want that their intersection with A is not, I could say just one. So that is where well, intersection of A is none. Do you understand, right? So I could also say C could be uh, 1, 4, 6, for example, correct? I could also say C could be 1, 4, 6, 8, and 9. Now, in that case, also, we do not have any common elements between A and C. So they all can form a disjoint function. You get a point, right? So we could have many answers for part A, as I've shown here. Now, let's look into part B. D intersection B prime right is a null set find this set d so similarly you could have many examples in uh, part b also now part c is find the maximum number of subsets of c okay so now you have to find maximum number of subsets of c so like this you can do an exercise and find what could be the maximum number of subsets for c itself so in that case, it is a good idea that we have taken four and this five are remaining, correct? So two to the power of five could be the maximum number of subsets, but take away one because one of them is the null set and null set is common between the two. And this is very tricky. So two to the power of five minus one should be the answer, clear? Why did we subtract one? Because when we consider two to the power of five, in that case, we are including the null set, but null set will be common. And we are interested in finding A intersection C as a null set itself, no element, 
common correct fine now let's go to d which is find the maximum number of subsets of d so in this case not b right so we are looking for maximum number of subsets as far as not b is concerned we have one two three four five six that means seven eight nine is not in b so if i want d intersection not b as an empty set that means that i'm actually looking that set as b itself correct maximum right so one two three four five six will be my set and find the maximum number of subsets for this you could now do it yourself so i hope that makes sense right so find the number find the maximum number of subsets of d like we did in c i like you to answer part d correct so we have talked about complement of a set intersection of a set now let's take up union of a set union of a set a and set b is denoted by a union b is a set of all the elements that are either in set a or in set b right or in both of them as shown here so the union will be everything inside right complement was everything outside union is everything inside as shown here correct so when I say A union B, we're looking for each element X, which could belong to A or it could belong to B, right? Of course, it could belong to both of them also. So again, a similar example, we have set A, B, and we have a union set similar to one. You need to now work out what is A union B, what is A union B prime, what is A union B everything prime, complement of A union B, and then you have to find the number of elements which are union of complement of A and complement of B. Right? To check your answers, we have provided you with the answers here this time, but you need to work it out. Okay, so take your time to find the answers for these questions. Now, here is the rule for union. It says number of elements in the union of set A and B is given by the relation number of elements in A plus number of elements in B take away number of elements in the intersection of A and B. Well, you will notice that when we talk about union, in that case, we are talking about all the elements in A, correct? And we are also talking about all the elements in B. So in that case, we counted this twice, correct? And therefore, we have to subtract once. And that is how you get your formula. Clear? Now, here is a proof for the formula. You can always go through this proof. Consider the Venn diagram in the figure for the sets A and B with P, Q, and R being the number of elements in the regions shown. So when you have, uh, let me erase this so this becomes much more clearer. So when you have the sets like this, let us say P is the element which is in A but not in intersection and R is the elements in the intersection of A and B and Q are the elements which are only in B but not in A, right? In that case, the union will be sum of elements P, Q and R. So that's what I've written here. N of A is P plus R in this case. Number of elements in A is sum of P and R. Number of elements in B is R plus Q, and number of elements in the intersection is only R, correct? So we can begin by saying, what is the number of elements in A union B? Of course, it is sum of all the three. Now, you can add and subtract R. So we are doing what? We are adding R and we are subtracting R, correct? So that doesn't really change the situation but it helps us to prove it. So we added and subtracted R, then we rearranged getting P plus R and Q plus R and minus R. P plus R is what? Number of elements in A. Q plus R is number of elements in B. And just R is number of elements in A intersection B. And we get our formula. You get the idea. So remember, the, the union will include number of elements in A number of elements in B, they get added, and we have to take away 
number of elements which are not which are in the intersection right now clearly if i have a disjoint function which is kind of like this right in that case the intersection is zero right so in this case what you notice is that the number of elements in a intersection b is is a null set correct this is a and this is b is a null set so in this particular case the number of elements in a union b will be equal to what number of elements in a plus number of elements in b right because you have to take away nothing from it correct so then it becomes a very general formula for union of a set so i hope this point is well taken right very important point we'll actually come back to this when we talk about probabilities now let's take up example number 12 in example 12, we'll try to use the rule, the union rule, which we just discovered. Let's practice some examples and understand this particular rule. In a committee, 20 speak English, 15 speak French, and 4 speak both French and English. How many speak only English? The best way to do this is to sketch a Venn diagram. So we'll do the Venn diagram. To solve this particular question right so the venn diagram is shown here so what you do is you begin from the center we have four which speak both french and english correct so this number here so put the intersection first and then we know 20 speak english so 16 plus 4 gives you 20 for english 15 speak french 4 plus 11 is 15 and that makes 15 French, correct? Now, how many speak only English? You can clearly see only English is 16, correct? How many speak only French? That is 11. How many speak at least one of these two languages? Add them all. So we get 16 plus 4 plus 11 as our answer, which is 31. So that is how we could answer this question, correct? So Venn diagram is an excellent way of answering such questions. Now let's look into example 13. In example 13, we have again a very similar question. However, this time we'll use the formula to answer the question. So formula or Venn diagram, both can be used. The question here is, in a survey of 32 students of grade 11, it was found that 16 had taken math, 10, had biology and seven had both math and biology. How many students neither took math nor biology? So total, that means universal set is known to us, which is 32, right? This is important to understand. So 32 is the total. Now, when we say that it was found that 16 had taken math, so number of students with math is 16 now. Number of students with biology is 10 given to us and the intersection is given as 7. And the total in the universe is 32 for this particular example. Now we know the formula, which is number of elements in math and biology will be what? Add their numbers and subtract what is the intersection. So 16 plus 10 minus 7 gives you 19 as your answer. Clearly, that is how you could do it. The other way, of course, is the Venn diagram. So in this case, what we have done is that we have used the formula, right? But alternate method is Venn diagram. If you are making a Venn diagram, you have to start with insight. 7 is common to both and this number comes from 16 minus 7, which is 9, and then this number comes from uh, the 10 minus 7, which is 3, okay? So that is how you get those numbers. And to get the answer, just add them up so that you can get number of elements, which are total, right? Now, the question here was, how many students neither took math nor biology? So what we got here is the union of the two inside. How many did not take it? So the complement of this, we have to look into the universe, which is 32. So 32 take away those who took either mass or biology, correct? So that gives you the answer and the complement 
of the union is being considered here to find the solution. It's a very tricky question. I'd like you to actually pause the video, go through it, and understand how do we get the answer for how many students neither took math nor English. So we are basically interested in this number. You get an idea, right? So now I think it's absolutely clear. So we are interested in this number of students, not the inside union part. And that is what we mean when we say number of elements, which is complement of math union biology. Clear? Okay. Now, De Morgan's law is one of the very critical laws to understand. We'll take up a simple example to really see what it states and how to prove it later. So De Morgan's law states that A union B complement. Complement of A union B is intersection of complements of A and B, right? So intersection of not A, not B is same as union of A and B complement. That is what it is. On the other hand, if I do A intersection B complement, then it is same as complement of A and B union, right? That is how we write. So let's take similar example as we did earlier. Set A 2357, set B 353567. So we changed it a bit. We have included 7 in A also. And then universal 1, 2, 9. So we need to verify this. So let's find what is A union B complement and what is A, not A, not B intersection. Is that clear to you? So you can take your time, work this out and write down your solutions here. Correct? So let this be an exercise. So do both left side and right side and then check whether you get the same answer or not. Right? Let's try to understand from the definition of Venn diagram. When I say a union B complement, it means what? So let's try to do it. A union B means everything inside and complement of that means, so let me shade, let me shade here. Okay, so I'm redrawing and then we'll shade and try to understand it, right? So we have A and then we have B, correct. And we want to find something which is A, union B complement. That means outside these, right? So that is this. Is that clear to you? That becomes A union B complement, which is not included in either of those sets. Correct? Now, let us also look into what is, after all, intersection of not A and not B, right? What is? So if I say not A, not A is outside this part, right? So the not A is this. This is not A, correct? Okay. And now, what is not B? So if I say not B, it is, uh, let me use another line here, right? Not B means this. Do you see that? Not B means? Oh, I improve. Okay, wait. So not B will mean we are looking into this part, not B. Clearly, the intersection is outside part, and so these are equal. So you could actually shade them separately and then compare the answers. You will get the solution. Similarly, I would like you to verify this using Venn diagrams. Correct? So let this be an exercise. You can also prove this algebraically, which we are going to soon take. Now let's take example uh, 14 solution. So in this particular case, what we did was A union B. So A union B means all these elements which we have 2, 3, 5, 7, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and which is not within this is 1, 8, and 9. So 1, 8, and 9 is the complement of A union B, which is not common in A and B, right? 
Now, when you do not A and not B, even then you get the same answer. So what you could do here is write down what is not A, right, and what is not B, and then it will be easier for you to answer this. So 2, 3, 5, 7, so 1, 2, 3, 5, so 4, and then we have 6, 7 is there, 8 and 9. So this is not A. As far as not B is concerned, we have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that means 8 and 9, correct? So when we are saying the intersection of these two, that means the common things between these two is 1, 8, and 9. And that is what it is, correct? So that is all you could do. Similarly, you could do what is A intersection B complement, and you'll get the answer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Now let's try to prove the De Morgan's theorem. Now this is a very important part. Right, so I like you to go through it clearly. So we'll do part A first, which is uh, the let's call this as our part A and this as part B. So when I'm saying that <coughs> complement of A union B, it really means that if there is an element X which belongs to A union B complement, that means it does not belong to A union B, right? So that is what it means does not belong to A, union B means it does not belong to A and it does not belong to B. Well, if it does not belong to A, it should belong to A complement, right? Similarly, if it does not belong to B, it should belong to complement of B. And that means it belongs to the intersection of both A and B complement. And that is how we prove it algebraically. Similarly, for part B, We'll start with the intersection of A and B complement, right? And we'll say, well, if X belongs to the intersection of A and B complement, it means it does not belong to intersection of A and B. Or it does not belong to A or it does not belong to B. And that means it belongs to complement of A or complement of B. Now that means A, X belongs to the complement of A, union complement of B. Correct? Now here is another test question for you based on De Morgan's law. A union B complement is equals to the intersection of complement of A and B or there's another rule which is intersection of A and B complement is union of complements of A and B. Question here is given that NU is 24 intersection of number of elements in intersection of A and B is X. Number of elements in a is y, number of elements in B is 2y, and number of elements in A, complement of A intersection, complement of B is 7, find the least possible value of y. So you can pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. You need to understand what is, after all, number of elements which are within the intersection of not A and not B. So we'll figure out that these are the elements which are outside this, correct? Now clearly, total number of elements are 24. And therefore, 24 should be equal to all these numbers given here. Right? So in short, that is how you could approach it. Now the complete solution is given before you. So I'd like you to pause the video, understand each and every set here, and see how we are proceeding to solve. Now, when you rearrange, what you really get is x is equal to 3y minus 24 plus 7. Now, which reduces to x is equal to 3y minus 7. Now, these are whole numbers, right? These are natural numbers. They have to be greater than 0. These are some numbers greater than 0, right? So that means y should be greater than 17 over 3. Only then, the number here, will be positive, correct? So that is kind of important to understand. So 17 over 3 means y is greater than 5, right? 17 divided by 3 is a 6, right? 6 point something. So that means it is greater than uh, 6 point something. So the minimum value of y is 7. 3 times 6 is 18, right? So 5 points. So minimum value of y is 7, right? 
sorry. Y is greater than 17 over 3. So when you do 17 over 3, you get 3 times 5 as 15 and 20 means around 3 approximately 5.7. So the minimum value is what? If it is 5, then you get a negative number, right? So it has to be 6, correct? So that is what the minimum is. That answer was wrong, and that is why I took my time to correct it. So y is minimum value is 6. So that is how you're going to answer it. Clear? So now let's uh, move on and take the next example. Now in the next example, we have three sets. We'll see how to work with these sets. Now the question is, the Venn diagrams of three sets are shown. Now whenever you have three sets, we will have eight regions as shown here, right? Number one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these are eight different regions which are shown here. Now what you need to do here is when diagrams of the three sets shows eight regions, numbered one to eight, identify the regions that represent the following. So A, intersection B, union C. So what we are looking into is intersection of A and B, which is these two regions, correct? Means seven and eight, and union C. So the regions will be seven, eight, and C includes, this is C, right? Um, will include two, five, and six also. So it is two, five, and six also. Do you see that? So these become the the regions. So you will shade also this portion. Does it make sense? So this is the region which will shade A, intersection B, union C. Likewise, you can do the others, correct? So when you say A, intersection B, complement, and then intersection with C, so complement means a outside this, right? Everything but not this, right? Everything but not this. So when you say everything but not this, then every outside interval will be included. So A intersection B, not that. So A intersection B is this. So outside means everything like this. Is that clear to you? And also, we want that, now we are doing part this intersection with C. So, so intersection with C. So clearly, the portion which is intersecting with C is this particular portion, okay? Since that is the part of C which is common. And therefore, what you get here in this particular case is, yeah. So we have A intersection B outside. So this is also included, correct? So these are the regions which will be part of our question. So in this case, 2, 5, and 6. Correct? Likewise, you need to do all of them, right? So you can use this particular Venn diagram, do your question, and then you can erase. Now, if I say A, complement of A intersection, complement of B with union C, how do I get it? So complement of A intersection B, you could also use the De Morgan's theorem, but you could do directly also. So outside A, outside B intersection. So if you do outside A and outside B intersection, in that case, what you get is everything outside this, and then you want to find with C. So that means you have included proportion one, you have included two, right? And since you included C, you have all other portions. So in this case, it'd be 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, right? 1, 2, 5, 6, and 8, correct? So 1, 2, 5, 6, and 8 will be the portion, right? Because you're taking union of C. So everything in C will definitely be there. And outside A, intersection B will mean that, <clears throat> I mean, not A and not B will mean everything outside. Okay. Similarly, we can do the last one also, which is not A. Not A means outside A. Union, B intersection, not C. So B intersection, not C means we are talking about this portion, correct? B intersection, not C. 
And with this, we are also interested in union of not A. So union of not A will actually, not A includes the portion of C. So everything which is not three and five, so everything which is not three and five will be included. You get the idea, right? So except for three and five will include all the items, one, two, so three and five will not be included. Four, six, and eight will be included. So, so that is how. So not eight, okay. <clears throat> eight will also not be there, but one, two, four, and also seven will be there, right? <clears throat> Correct. So basically, you need to figure this out. So we have B intersection not C. So B intersection not C, let me shade like this. B intersection 7 is included. Do you see that? B intersection not C. So within B, but not C means we have included 7 and 4. Correct? Let's rewrite. So B intersection not C, we have included 7 and 4. And now we are saying not eight. So as soon as I say not eight, I can include one, two, and then not A is also six, right? So we do one, two, and six. Is that clear to you? So that is how we can get the solution for this particular case. So that is how we are going to answer. So that brings us to the end of our video. I hope you've understood the concepts. So it's a very important chapter, which is also a foundation for permutation combination probability. <clears throat> I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.